In a modern era of footballers that are media trained, sanitized, and often ridiculed for showing any level of emotion, so obviously a nine-man brawl developed out there today that saw you arrested for manslaughter. Can you just talk us through the emotions of that one? Yeah, well, I'm just happy to get the three points, to be honest, Mark. You didn't even win the game, you didn't get three points. One man stands out from the rest. Neil Mope, a striker that has made himself a reputation that has absolutely nothing to do with actually being a striker. A wind-up merchant, a troll, and often a winner of the Shithousery Award. Loved by many and hated by more. But why is Neil Mope so important to English football? You know what I love, I've just realised? A footballer that's foreign, but also still sounds really British. I've just realized that sounded so pexit, Jesus. You're only allowed here if you sound English, mate. And it's fair to say that Neil Mopé may have really, really inducted that English banter and English culture into his game because this man is relentless. There are certain ways that footballers extract the best out of themselves when they're out on the pitch, whether it be fan pressure, whether it be manager and coach pressure, whether it be strictly professional or whether it be strictly unprofessional. And the latter is the case with Neil Mopé. This guy is a menace. Go anywhere on social media and you will see split opinion on this guy. He's like the Marmite of the Premier League. But one man who won't enjoy it is Bern Leno and that's kind of where Neil Mopé's shithousing story began. A looping ball over the top claimed by the then Arsenal goalkeeper. A little bump, a little bit of body contact from Neil Mopé. Bern Leno goes down and it turns out he's done his ACL. A scrap with Matteo Gunduzi, a late goal against Arsenal and suddenly Bern Leno can't stand to see him on his TV at home. <laughs> He's had a run-in with Kyle Walker after the Manchester City wingback featured in an interview addressing cheating allegations going on in his personal life. Kyle will be returning that favour with interest, snapping him in the reverse fixture when Man City play Brentford again. And that won't be the only time he's ploughed someone other than his wife in <clears throat> 2024. His beef with James Madison against Tottenham this season, where after scoring he copied Madison's celebration, throwing a dart towards Tottenham fans, only for Brentford to lose and Spurs players to return the favour. James Madison said he doesn't score enough goals to have his own celebration and Mopai was keeping the shithousery coming over on Instagram. He spoke about that Tottenham incident as well recently with Sport Bible. All of them players on the pitch, every time they scored, they were like running right at me. Running Johnson, I believe it was as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. They were Richarlison, everyone. Richarlison, yeah. So just by throwing the dart, like, I got 11 players on toast, so it was <laughs> just so easy. 11 men on toast is crazy. How'd you even fit them all on there? He's ready for action at all times. Disappointed after a quiet opening 10 minutes to a Premier League match. So far, no one's up for a fight. Okay. Yeah. It's early days though, isn't it? I honestly reckon he has notes on every single player in the Premier League. Their deepest and darkest secrets, all on the back of a water bottle behind a goal. Kevin De Bruyne won't be happy when the Frenchman brings up Thibaut Courtois in their next match. Jesus have souls. I go to church. I'm a Christian. This guy will go to extreme lengths to piss off anybody and everybody. When he faces off against Bukayo Saka, pulls his sock down and he's got a tattoo of Giorgio Chiellini. Zuma starting to become frustrated when Neil's been meowing at him up top for 75 full minutes. Anthony getting upset when he brings out his goal contributions record, probably. Because this brother is putting in all of the man hours, all of the research just to find something that a Sheffield United defender did back in year seven. He'd be an advocate of child poverty just to annoy Marcus Rashford. Flaunting a one night stand back in 2019 with a certain Chelsea fan just to get back at Nicholas Jackson. I'm sorry Miss Jackson. Ooh, I am for real. The guy just has no remorse and I, act I genuinely enjoy that. Skipping down the touchline to cause minor inconvenience to Cole Palmer for no reason is psychopathic behaviour, lads. Why is he being cheeky? And even recently, as Brighton's Lewis Dunk scored against Everton, the former Brighton man, of course, commented on his Insta post saying, my captain, Neil, you're quite literally still contracted to Everton, who you're on loan from at Brentford. Anybody can get it. And Everton midfielder Idris Agey will not have been too pleased seeing Neil's antics over on socials. Mopo, you are an absolute disgrace. I hope Brighton get relegated. I just know he'd be conducting this behaviour in really inappropriate situations. It's alright, don't worry, I'm gonna get you the money. Yeah, you better, because I swear to God, Louise, if you don't, your daddy's. Do you mind?
mind, pal. I'm sorry to say, I've looked at his vital signs on the screen and things aren't looking good. I'm not gonna lie, we might have to switch off the machine and I hope you're ready for that. Yeah, I'll tell you what, I've looked at the screen and it says that your granddad's done out me. Neil, please, I'm trying to- He's even been beefing with backroom staff, for God's sake. Kevin Nolan having an altercation with him when they played against West Ham. I just know that Big Kev will be running on from the bench, getting a big challenge in when he's down by the touchline. In another life, him and Jamie Vardy were a strike combination. They actually, they wouldn't get anything done. I'm not even gonna lie, they'd just be bad influencers on each other. The ball will be two yards out, empty net, ready for a tap-in. Only for him and Jamie to run the length of the pitch to give a 63-year-old a piece of their mind. And I think what makes this situation even better is the fact that truthfully, He's bang average. I mean that in like the least disrespectful way possible. He's, he's a good, he's a Premier League striker. You have to be a good footballer in the, the space of the universe in order to be a Premier League striker. And he's pretty efficient when he's not playing for Everton as well. Like he, he's all right. He's a passable Prem striker, but I think it would be less funny if he was like amazing because he actually gives his targets and his victims something to play off. Like with James Madison, it, it became a back and forth because it was like, oh, he's a striker that doesn't actually score that many goals. And look, listen, I'm not kissing in us, all right? At, at first, I'm not gonna lie, originally, when the Burn Leno incident first happened, I didn't really like Neil Mopé's response at all. I kind of agreed with him in the sense that obviously Arsenal, th that was a time where Arsenal's squad was really immature and really petulant. And he was kind of right. In a sense, they were just going after him at the end of the game and they'd probably been chatting a lot of shit during the match as well. But at the same time, you've just slapped up Burn Leno and put him in hospital for about a month. But I have like slowly converted. I have slowly changed my opinion because a lot of it is just, it's harmless. It's also stuff that you, if you go to a Sunday league match or you play Sunday league, this is the sort of shit that's happening all of the time. It feels like raw football personality that's like actually being translated onto a Premier League pitch. For the first time in a while, you do get some characters in the world of football, whether it be in punditry and you've got Micah Richards, for example, or whether it be some funny characters like Jack Grealish and stuff who love to go out and get on the drinks and stuff. But I think he is just quite a unique character. There's players that are aggressive and there's players that like a scrap, but that's not what Mo pays on. He's a small Don. He's This is an example of a man that is focusing his small man syndrome into like the perfect avenue to just annoy everybody. Football needs shithousery at base level. I think that it's a wonderful part of the game as long as it's not genuinely hurting someone. The Kyle Walker one was a little bit on the line because obviously it's it's stuff that's gone on in someone's personal life. Then again, I'm not someone to talk about that because I've made references and jokes about it in FTW. But even the Emmy Martinez incident against Villa where he kind of shoves him a little bit. Martinez goes down holding every bone in his body. Then Emmy Martinez does it back to him and he kind of replicates what the Argentine goalkeeper had done just to annoy everybody involved. He even gets Kamara sent off. And speaking of Emmy Martinez, that original shithousery, that original injury to Bern Leno quite literally won Lionel Messi the World Cup. Without that injury to Bern Leno, we don't see the emergence of Emmy Martinez, who then doesn't move to Aston Villa and impress. And of course, with that move to Aston Villa, goes on to help them win the Copper America with penalty saves and then produces one of the most iconic saves in football history to deny France in the final minute of the World Cup final, they then win on pens again. It's the ultimate butterfly effect. The man completely disassembled and reshaped the space-time continuum, bro. Uh, you call yourself the Big Bang? Not even that big, to be honest with you. I wonder if he was always like this. The average kid, like Xbox user, with a 0.3 KD on Call of Duty Black Ops 2, but he's ruined five people's days by just rinsing them in the party chat. Yeah, yeah, and will he continue to be like this after after his footballing career. The guy plays football for interaction, so he might be the same as a, as a pundit, for example. Roy Keane will not be happy after Neil pronounces potatoes in a funny accent live on Sky Sports. I might smash into somebody. Micah Richards will be taking matters into his own hands when the Frenchman says that he burst off the scene as well. <laughs> and I saw a perfect tweet, actually, uh, the other day as well, saying that if there was one man that should sign for an old firm club yet, either Celtic or Rangers, it is Neil Mopé. This man would create a whole new dimension of that rivalry. He'd have Glasgow City Centre looking like the Blitz. This man would start religious warfare like we've never seen before. But here, look, you might still not be convinced. And I get it. Because because when it happens to you, when the crime happens in your neighbourhood, it's not very fun. If he was shithousing Virgil van Dijk or Mo Salah or Luis Diaz or whatever, obviously in the moment I'd be fuming. 
because that's the point. As long as it's something that can give you that back and forth and it's relatively harmless, I don't see the problem because ultimately there always will be. Neil Mope isn't some god level striker. He's just very good at getting underneath people's skin and that's what helps him perform. That's what drives him and motivates him during a 90 minutes. And footballers, let's be honest, can be a little bit bland. Not from the get go, but they are media trained. They are shown what to say, what not to say, what to do, what not to do. And you end up with a bit of a sanitized human being in the eyes of the media to the point where sometimes their personalities aren't shown in the public eye. They might have sensational personalities to their friends and families, but we don't ever get to see it. So we should champion, we should celebrate when we actually get a player that's got a bit of a unique one. I fucking love Jack Grealish for the same reason. Yes, he should probably lay off the Jaeger bombs every now and again. But at the end of the day, he's a funny lad when it comes to interviews and he's not afraid to show that he's like quite relatable to that average person. And Neil Mope should be allowed to appeal to that average Sunday league footballer who hasn't got as much technique as the opposition striker, but knows how to get in their head and affect performance just by being annoying. Neil, honestly, for me, keep it going. I rate it personally. But let me know what you think of Neil down in the comments section below. Do you like the shithousery? Do you like this character art that we've got going on? But if you enjoyed today's video, feel free to slap a like on it. And of course, subscribe if you're new to the channel. You can also follow me on social media. It is at the official FNG on Twitter and on Insta. But it's been a pleasure ranting at you guys today. Have a wonderful day. Enjoy yourselves and goodbye.